What makes me come alive is being aligned with nature, being in relationship with deep friends and soulmates around the world, and um, my vanity of trying to make a difference. When I was in Phnom Penh years and years ago, decades, and I was working on the landmine treaty, and I met this little girl who was missing her leg and was on one crutch, Cambodian girl, and she hobbled over and, and in Khmer was rattling on. I didn't understand what she was saying. And she saw that I kept pointing to my fake leg. And what she said was, you are one of us. And I was, you know, I'm a big guy and I was a big American and I was wanting to do big things in Southeast Asia. Like that was a moment of kindness that she saw me and she made me just like herself. And so that really just was a reset button. I thought it was so kind. She didn't ask for anything. She just had one phrase that blew me, blew my heart open, essentially. I might say I was going to India for the first time and meeting dear friends and, and going to Gandhi 3.0 and, and tapping into um, not my business entrepreneurship or social entrepreneurship, but the innerpreneurship. What does that mean to go inside? Um, I had been so busy for so long. And so that came at a perfect time in my life to remind myself to just go in and abide by the soul and to, to sit there and, um, and watch what happens. So that was a big thawing, you know, one of Gandhi's, you know, one little speck of salt or one speck of sugar or kindness can thaw, you know, my iceberg, and it did. So of course, you know, I'd expect my mother to be my teacher, but um, she has Alzheimer's, and during the pandemic, I cared for her for with my wife, and she has become. She she has since moved to Colorado, but she became a different type of teacher, not like a mother. She doesn't recognize who I am or know my name, but she speaks in profound riddles. And I say I should keep a, you know, the book of sayings or proverbs from my Alzheimer's teacher. Um, so it goes from all is one and we don't know the path until the end. And she wouldn't have made a sentence coherent for days, but something will come out of her like a prayer. And when she prays, she's most eloquent. Like she can put sentences together. And then the next second she might say, bring me a cow and I will lick its lips. And I burn, like I laugh and then I say, mom, what do you mean? Bring me a cow. Like I thought maybe it's an ancient Sanskrit like proverb that I didn't know that she was channeling. But it was funny and coherent. And then I said, well, you just said that. And she goes, I never said that, that's gross. So the, the teaching of an Alzheimer or, or many people who are differently wired cognitively and others is that you start to learn to talk to their soul um, and just bring the energy of being present to them or anyone, I guess we all can benefit from that. But my Alzheimer's teacher shows me how much I need to stay soul to soul when the, the past and the memories are gone. It may be a cop-out, but my prayer for the world is I just repeat, you know, when I'm in trouble or wondering, I just say, thy will be done, thy will be done, thy will be done, thy will be done. Like just almost like chanting, thy will be done, Lord have mercy, thy will be done. Mm -hmm.